You're listening to the American Girl Podcast Network. Hi, I'm Maggie Lawson, the narrator of 10 Minute Mysteries. This season's story is based on one of our favorite American Girl mystery books, The Light in the Cellar, a Molly Mystery by Sarah Bucky. Episode 5, The Black Truck. Someone's coming. It's a black truck. Molly dropped the curtain she was holding and listened as the truck pulled up in front of Greystone Manor and the engine stopped. Molly and Emily were at the manor house to fetch Mrs. Courier's reading glasses for her so that she could read the magazines the girls were delivering at the convalescent hospital. But they hadn't expected anyone else to be at the house. I have no idea who that could be. We better hide. Whoever it is might be up to no good. Quickly, the girls crouched down and squeezed into the tight space between the window and the canopy bed. Molly felt cold all over, but her hands were damp with sweat. The girls waited, listening hard, but all they heard was their own breathing. (sighs) After a long silence, Molly crawled to the window and lifted the silk curtain to peek out at the driveway. I don't see the truck anymore. They must have left. Let's go. Cautiously, the two girls tiptoed across the room. In the doorway, Molly looked up and down the hall. Even the dim shadows seemed threatening. Do you see anything? Asked Emily. Molly shook her head and stepped out of the bedroom. Emily followed her toward the staircase at the end of the hall, moving as quickly and quietly as they could. When the girls reached the first floor, they started down the long hallway toward the front door. Suddenly, they heard a loud crash. Molly and Emily froze as they heard the sounds of footsteps in the cellar below. Here are the last ones, a man's voice said, followed by the heavy tread of someone climbing stairs. They're coming up here, thought Molly, her heart pounding. Emily grabbed her arm and they ran into the living room and dove behind a long couch as a man's muffled voice said, Well, we'll be done by Saturday. A door slammed in the cellar and the truck engine started. Molly crept to the window by the couch and looked out. They're driving away. Let's get out of here. The girls jumped to their feet and flew out the front door, slamming it behind them. They raced up the steep driveway to where they had left their bicycles. Molly sped down Overlook Hill Road on her bike, with Emily close behind. They didn't stop until they reached the park. Then they dropped their bikes on the ground and collapsed on the grass. I have never been so scared in my entire life, said Molly. There's something creepy about that house. First, we saw a light in the cellar, and now we heard those men. It sounded like they were in the cellar. What if, before Molly could finish her sentence, her older brother Ricky strolled by with his friend David? The boys often come to the park to play baseball. What's the matter with you two? You look like you've seen a ghost or something, said Ricky, casually tossing a baseball into the air and catching it with his mitt. It was worse than a ghost. I told Mrs. Courier I'd go to get her glasses for her, so we had to go into Greystone Manor. Molly told her brother what had happened inside the house. She expected him to be amazed. But when she finished, he just stood there, tossing and catching the baseball. Well, don't you think that's creepy? (sighs) No, I think you girls are dumb to get so excited, said Ricky. What did the truck look like? It was about the size of the milkman's truck, but it was black. Sounds like a repairman's truck, said David. They could have been working on the furnace or something. Yeah, some repairmen came and worked in the cellar, and then they left. Big deal. Ricky shrugged, and the two boys turned away and went to play ball. Molly turned to Emily. Do you think it was just a repairman? No, I don't. But I can't quite say why, Emily replied. Molly nodded. Suddenly she looked up, her eyes bright, and said, When we looked out the window, we didn't see the truck in the driveway, so we thought it was gone. But it must have still been there, because later we heard the men in the basement. And then I saw the truck driving away. So if the truck was still at the house, but it wasn't in the driveway, it must have been in the garage. So, so only the people who live in the house park in the garage. Repairmen would park in the driveway. But if it wasn't a repairman, who was it? And why were they parking in the garage? I don't know. It's like they were trying to hide their truck. Perhaps it was a friend of Mrs. Carrier coming to check on the house, Emily suggested. But Molly shook her head. If she has friends who visit the house, then why did she ask me to get her glasses for her? Molly reached into her pocket to be sure the glasses were still there. She felt the leather eyeglasses case and something else too. Oh no, what is it? Molly pulled out a large iron key hanging from a piece of twine. 
I forgot to leave the key. I suppose we have to take it back, don't we? Said Emily, staring at the key as if it were a snake poised to bite. Molly looked up at the darkening sky. Not now. It's too late. And it's going to start raining any minute. I promised we'd be home for dinner. We can take it back tomorrow after school. But tomorrow we're going to Oak Knoll Hospital again, said Emily. Then we'll take it on Friday, said Molly. And we should look around a bit. Something strange is going on at that house. And I want to show Ricky he's not as smart as he thinks he is. After school on Thursday, Molly and Emily picked up their magazines at the Red Cross and rode over to Oak Knoll. Inside the gleaming hospital, a nurse in a starched white uniform was striding quickly down the hall, and the man from Lawrence Laundry was delivering stacks of crisply ironed sheets. The nurse eyed Molly and Emily as if they didn't belong there. The girls hurried up the stairs to the patients' rooms. Molly found that many of the patients remembered her and were pleased to see her. She had saved a copy of National Geographic for the boy in room 214. I've already read that one. Don't you have any others? No, I'm sorry. That's the only one I have. Do you want a time instead? As the boy nodded, Molly noticed how thin he was. He asked, Will you read me an article about the army? My dad's in the army somewhere in England right now. So is my dad, said Molly. I suppose I could read you one article. Molly read him an article about the war in Europe. After she finished, the boy told her his name was Philip. He was eight years old, and when he grew up, he was going to be a spy. I'm going to sneak behind enemy lines and find out everything they're doing. I know everything that goes on at this hospital right now. I even know someone who's breaking the rules. I bet you'll make a great spy someday, Molly told him as she left his room and went over to the next patient. Molly saved Mrs. Courier's room for last. When she showed her the eyeglasses case, Mrs. Courier beamed. She put on the glasses and picked up a magazine. Bless you, my dear. Before it was all just a blur, but now I can read every word. I can't thank you enough. You're welcome. My friend Emily helped me, but I'm sorry, I forgot to lock the door and leave the key when we left. We were, um, in a hurry. Oh, dear. Could you go back and lock it this afternoon? Mrs. Courier asked, looking concerned. But it was getting late, and Molly did not want to go back to Greystone Manor in the dark. I can't go back today, but I can go tomorrow. Molly hesitated and then asked, Um, Mrs. Courier, does anyone else live at Greystone Manor? <sighs> no, not anymore. There was a nice couple, the Swensons, who served as my housekeeper and chauffeur. They lived in the apartment over the garage, but when I became ill, the house had to be closed up and the Swensons took a job elsewhere. I do wish I had someone keeping an eye on the property. If no one is living at the house, who was there yesterday? Molly wondered. She didn't want to worry Mrs. Courier, but she felt she had to risk another question. Is it hard to get repairs done on the house? I, I mean, if no one is living there, she asked. Mrs. Courier shook her head. I've given up on worrying about repairs right now, dear. That will all have to wait until I'm well enough to go home. So Ricky was wrong, Molly thought with a flash of triumph. It wasn't repairmen. Then she felt a chill of fear. If it wasn't repairmen driving that black truck and coming into the basement of Greystone Manor, then who was it? Listen to next week's episode to find out Molly's latest discovery at Greystone Manor. Thank you so much for listening to 10 Minute Mysteries. And parents, don't forget to write us a review wherever you are listening. It really helps us out. Parents can watch 10 Minute Mysteries with their family on YouTube, or your child can watch on YouTube Kids. <laughs>